New images from the James Webb Telescope may be changing everything, giving scientists a glimpse at what our universe looked like more than 13 billion years ago, and it's not what they expected. In fact, the lead scientist of the study in Nature says he nearly spat out his coffee, saying, quote, we just discovered the impossible. What he's referring to are six massive galaxies dating back 13 billion years. They were only expecting to find, in their words, tiny young baby galaxies, not ones like this, not ones just as old as our own. Between the new James Webb discoveries and unidentified objects being shot out of the sky this month, questions have certainly been swirling about what is above us. And when it comes to questions on science and the universe, you can't ask anyone better than astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. He has a new book called Starry Messenger, which challenges readers to examine life's most discussed topics through a cosmic and scientific lens. We welcome now my guest, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you so much for joining us on News Nation. Thanks for having me. That was a great introduction. We don't need to do the interview. You did. <laughs> oh, we're all good. We'll, we'll wrap. No, no, no. But I want to hear what you have to say about this. Let's talk about the discovery from the James Webb uh, Space Telescope, because the lead scientist says that this upends what was considered settled science. In just two or three sentences, can you help us understand what is the significance here? Well, first of all, our best understanding of the beginning moments of the universe, you have this sort of cauldron of matter and energy that isn't quite in a situation yet to form stars or galaxies or any sort of tangible objects we know and love later. And so we, there's this period of time we identify as the dark ages where, yeah, there was matter and energy, but nothing shining yet. And the matter still had to coalesce and organize into these cities we call galaxies, cities of stars. So here you have this gap. And now the James Webb T Space Telescope is identifying objects in the dark ages that by best measurements we have are large, fully developed galaxies. So who ordered that? All right, so we, we're justifiably befuddled by it. And, but there's still other data that can still come in from these galaxies that will derive from their spectra. And when you get a spectrum of a galaxy, it's like the fingerprint of all of the chemistry that's going on in there and also, well, chemical elements that are going on in there, as well as where we would put it in the expansion model of the universe. Because maybe they're just a weird other kind of object and not the kind of object we think it should be. Because if it's a new kind of object, that's also a discovery. And so, uh, and, and by the way, the James Webb Space Telescope was conceived and designed to help us understand the origin of galaxies. So we shouldn't be surprised that it's forcing us to scratch our head. Okay, well, and from galaxies in the universe to our skies and spy balloons, uh, you know, of course, we're tracking the U.S. recently shooting down that alleged Chinese spy balloon off the Carolina coast, and, and then shooting down three more objects over the next week. So at first, the Pentagon was really slow to confirm these objects uh, were actually not UFA, unidentified aerial phenomenon, and speculation was swirling all over the place. What do you think the likelihood is that any of these objects were extraterrestrial in nature yeah i think if your first if your first thought is i don't know what it is so it's probably alien uh okay you know that makes good storytelling and good news headlines but chances are it's not <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it seems to me if we were uh, if we were succumbing to an alien invasion someone would catch that on a high resolution smartphone that has video and 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 and, and still photos and so there's six billion smartphones in the world and I, we shouldn't have to rely on just what the navy happens to see in the atmosphere in monochromatic you know fuzzy video we have high quality video all around the world so it would be odd to me if aliens were only putting their probes in front of Navy pilots. <laughs> okay, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and we'd love to get your take as well on the object seen over Mosul just released. Um, it, there's a clip, it's known as the Mosul Orb now, allegedly taken from a US spy plane over Mosul back in 2016. That yeah, footage yeah. released from uh, UFO expert Jeremy Corbell. So the de de Department of Defense refusing to comment on this object. What is your take here? Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, it's that's the whole point of the U in UFO or the UAP, which was just the rebranding by the government of UFOs, <laughs> the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. 
that's like exactly UFO, right? They're equal things. So no, I don't know what it is. Well, so well, let's well, find out. <laughs> let and me ask by you the this. way, we have a yeah. we have a military yeah. that is tasked to protecting us from stuff that could harm us. Yes. They should check it all out. Yeah, and if a little green man steps out, bring it into the town square, and then we're we're good to go on alien visitation. I mean, I don't Until know. If, then... I don't know if we're good to go at that point. <laughs> I think that's the beginning of a whole nother can of worms. But but let's talk okay. about UAPs right. quickly. Uh, the U.S. government receiving more than 350 reports of these unidentified aerial phenomenon, the UAPs, less than in less than two years. Uh, that's according to a report by the Director of National Intelligence. And about half of the 350, um, they're quote unidentified. Do you think it's likely we've been visited by extraterrestrials or will be in the near future? Yeah, no, I, 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 I just this this being put forth as evidence for extraterrestrials is instead to, to by my read evidence of things that we don't know. Right. The universe brims with mysteries. I don't have any problems staring at something and not knowing what it is, but resisting the urge to say aliens are somehow coming from space. Uh, I need better evidence if you're going to make an extraordinary claim such as that. In fact, I need extraordinary evidence, not simply an object in the sky you can't identify. And what would extraordinary evidence be? Like I said, give me high-res video, the alien walking out of the, the, the flying saucer or however they got here. And by the, like I said, cat videos go viral instantly. You know if someone had a video of aliens coming out of a, uh, uh, an alien spacecraft, that would be known worldwide. You can't hide that. That you, the government can't keep that a secret. All right. So, and plus the government is not good at keeping secrets. Plus, the government is not as competent as people think they are about what it is they think they're hiding. The government can't control the sky. They can't control what you take pictures of. So this that's the source of my skepticism. But I don't want to stop people from attempting to find out what these are. Go right ahead. Do you, Neil deGrasse Tyson, think that we are alone in the universe, or do you believe there's other intelligent life out there? Now, anyone who studied the problem would totally be all in on there being other life in the universe for sure. And intelligent life, that's kind of hubristic of us to be the measure of intelligence. <laughs> because <laughs> there could be an alien out there who does not count us among the ranks of intelligent species in the universe. So so it's audacious of us to say, let's find other intelligent species just like us. Before we know they had visited us and went back to their home planet and said, there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. I mean, 100 percent, Neil. And this this keeps me up at night. I mean, if something else were to discover us, what are what are the chances they'll think we're anything better than even amoeba or, or something yeah, like well, that? Yeah, that's, this is I mean, does it end well? Of my point. Can I can I ask? They does see it this end one well? species? Yeah, <laughs> it won't end well. OK. And, and by the way, the evil alien trope. I think it's not because we have we suspect aliens will be evil. It's because we know we're evil to each other mm. when a high technology encounters a low technology. I think they're mirrors to our own behavior of how we have, we knowingly treated ourselves in the history of exploration and discovery. So, yeah, aliens are a metaphor for our own evil, as far as I can tell. Wow. Um, Neil, what keeps you up at night? Wondering whether we are smart enough to answer the very questions we have posed about our place in the universe. Or worse yet, are we smart enough to even know what question to ask? Mm. That keeps me awake at night. Great answers. Um, and this is a fabulous book. Um, you make some pretty remarkable predictions for the year 2050. Self-driving cars replacing all current vehicles. Uh, one stood out to me. You say humans will be able to regenerate limbs. We certainly encourage our viewers to check out Starry Messenger um, and really appreciate your time. Neil deGrasse Tyson, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. That, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.